Hi, uh, this is the uh, 1000 kilo capital vacuum lifter set up as it is for transport on its trolley. Um, it's a pretty compact little machine. The frame that it's sitting on is not designed for lifting so when you want to unpack the machine use the lifting eye, lift the vacuum lifter with the trolley uh, underneath the trolley on the sides there are locking bolts the locking bolts are on either side of the trolley just to make sure that the uh, trolley is lifted with the vacuum lifter um, you should check to make sure they're tight before you're lifting so now we just roll the trolley out of the way <coughs> And we've got our vacuum rig. So we go through the operation of the rig now. Basically the main features of it. <coughs> it only has one on off button. I'll turn it on. You'll see the strobe power light to indicate that the power is turned on. I'll turn it off now. We'll talk through the rest of it main features that you need to be considering are the green and red lights for each circuit obviously we have two circuits red indication is not safe to lift green indication is safe to lift same with the lights if the red lights on it's not safe to lift logically green lights on it is safe to lift we have a test button which is for the voltmeter to ensure that the battery is charged and above it we have an alarm which is low vacuum alarm just in the case that you can't actually see any of the visual indicators the rig has dual hydraulic cylinders one on either side for the tilting process and two 12 volt reduction gearboxes that operate the slew ring for the 360 degree rotation. The machine's fitted with a remote control which is mounted on a magnet. It's just convenient to be able to position it wherever you need it when you're operating. The flexi cable will give you about five meters of range. So from this remote control we have basically all the functions we need on the lifter we can change between tilting and rotating and operate backwards and forwards uh, vacuum suction on and vacuum suction release is all via the remote control on off button is still on the front of the machine you can see now the power lights on the red lights indicating that the vacuum is not turned on as soon as I turn the suction on this is what we see we have red lights indicating that it's not safe to lift we have an alarm sounding indicating that it's not safe to lift I'll now turn the unit off Okay. the main power switch here we'll turn it on indicator light tells us that the power is on red LED indicates that the vacuum is not turned on but the machine is on we're not using a wireless remote control so this is irrelevant green and red lights and the visual analog gauge tell us what the vacuum is and whether it's safe to lift or not lift we have one of these for each circuit blue and black circuits um, we also have a test button which is for the voltmeter to ensure the battery is fully charged before we start working. The alarm is obviously a low vacuum alarm which is only indicated when the vacuum system is turned to suction and the vacuum is still in the red on the two gauges. Once the gauges reach the green zone the red lights will turn off the green lights will turn on and the alarms will stop the remote control it does have a strong magnet on the back of it it's probably suggested to keep it away from your phones and your watches uh, it's great for locating the remote 
wherever you need it, um, either on these side frames as handy or on the uh, side here, the back of the body. Try not to leave it attached to another piece of machinery or you'll end up dragging the remote off. The remote control's got a couple of simple processes. Switch down for rotation, buttons for left and right rotation, flick this one up for tilting and then tilting up and down. The vacuum suction and release is controlled by these two dials here. The suction's off at the moment. When we turn it on, you'll hear the rig start to activate. I'll turn it off. When the suction's actually completed, when this is turned on, the alarms will stop. But to release, you must turn the switch back this way and also use the release button. So it's a dual function release, not one button release. You've seen the front of the machine, all the basic features. Um, if we spin it around, the rig's set up as a dual circuit as we've discussed. Um, so we've got eight pads on here. Half of them are on the blue circuit, half of them are on the black circuit. Ideally you always want to keep your pads uh, spread out around the glass logically with blue circuit and black circuit dispersed equally around the weight of the glass. We've got two blue manifolds opposing each other, two black manifolds opposing each other. Um, all the pads are rated at 150 kilograms working load limit. So you're talking about the pads that are on one circuit is what is calculating your total working load limit for the lifter. The second set of pads are there as a redundancy should something go wrong with the first circuit. With the manifolds, the quick release valves, which I'll disconnect now, take out the airline. As soon as the airline's removed, this valve shuts off and will create a vacuum on the manifold block without sending any air to the pads. As soon as they're reconnected, the pads active again. It's important to make sure that any pads you're expecting to use are connected the blue definitely to the blue manifolds, the black to the black manifolds, so there's no confusion and you ensure that the dual vacuum circuit is working correctly. All of the pads can be disconnected by simply removing all of these and then just reconfiguring the pads to the actual size that you need. We'll now put the extensions onto the rig so you can see it in its full format. down a little, give it a little wriggle, I'm not quite picking up the thread that's got it. Okay, uh, we'll use shift. Uh. Okay, so here's the lifter with two extension arms on, one on the blue circuit, one on the black circuit. Really it's only needed if you're lifting longer panels of glass. Um, essentially for lifting fins, we can use four pads in a line with the other pads here and the three along the bottom disconnected. They're also really good for stabilising against deflection when you're doing roof glazing and you've got a potential of glass bowing. Okay.
Okay, so here's the lifter in its full configuration with all the pads on it, um, with a full rating of 1,000 kilograms per circuit. You'll notice that one of the arms has two pads on it on the extension, um, which is bolted on here, the, which is on the blue circuit. Black circuit opposing has one pad on it. Likewise, at the other end of the machine, we have two pads on the black circuit and one on the blue down the bottom. It's important to remember when you're fitting these extensions that the extensions with two pads on need to fit onto a manifold that has four ports on it, otherwise you'll find you don't have enough ports for the extensions. The arm with the single pad on it, the manifold only has three ports 